In this procedure, a baby, just seconds away from birth, is killed by a medical doctor in one of the most horrifying manners imaginable. In fact, partial birth abortion was so grisly that the American Medical Association refused to acknowledge it as a legitimate procedure. In the first stage of the procedure, the abortionist is actually watching the baby on a TV screen using an ultrasound machine. This allows the abortionist to reach in with forceps and grab a baby, usually by a leg, turn the baby around, and begin to deliver the baby, while still alive, into the birth canal. At a certain point, the abortionist is able to grab the baby with his hands and continue to deliver the baby into the birth canal, everything except for the head. In this procedure, it is very important that the head not emerge from the womb because that, of course, would be a live birth under the law. So the doctor actually grips the baby in a certain way described in the paper to ensure that the head does not emerge as well as the body. Then at the point where the entire baby has been delivered alive into the birth canal, except for the head, the doctor takes a long surgical scissor, such as this one, or some other similar medical device, and thrusts it through the base of the baby's skull, as shown in drawing number four. This is generally what kills the baby. He removes the scissors, or the other puncturing instrument, and he inserts a tube, or a catheter. This tube is connected to a very powerful suction machine, which, when he turns it on, removes the baby's brain. This causes the skull to collapse, and the baby's head then emerges, completing the delivery of the dead baby puncturing a baby's skull and then sucking its brains out is extreme. What would you say? Is partial birth abortion any worse than any other abortion? Well, every abortion kills a living human developing baby. But this type of abortion is particularly gruesome. It's killing a baby during delivery. They called me up one day and asked me if I would work at the Women's Medical Center. And I told them I would, because I didn't have a problem with abortion, or at least I didn't think I did. The first lady we did was 26 and a half weeks pregnant. She had just found out that her baby had Down syndrome. And her parents and her boyfriend made her get this abortion. She didn't want it. As a matter of fact, she cried the entire three days she was in there. So we did her first, because she was upsetting the rest of the patients. And we brought her into the operating room, and put the gown on her, put her on the table, put her legs in the stirrups. And we started an IV and gave her Valium just to calm her down so she wouldn't care what was going on. She didn't get a general anesthetic to knock her out. And I really thought those babies were dead at this point. I thought, they're not gonna do this on a live baby, surely. They, you know, something's killed the baby. I don't know what I thought killed it, but they were very much alive and you could see the heartbeat. And taking a pair of forceps, he went up inside the cervix and into the uterus and found one of the baby's feet and turned the baby in utero because it wasn't headed feet first. He has to bring the baby out feet first. So he brought that foot down through the birth canal. Then he went up and he grabbed the other foot and he brought it down through the birth canal until he had both of the feet on the outside. And grabbing his little feet with his hands, he pulled the baby out of the mother breech position until he had the entire body, everything delivered, except for the head. And as I stood there, this little baby was kicking his feet, and moving his little hands and fingers, and very much alive. And the doctor's very careful to make sure that he holds the baby's head in with his two fingers, with his left hand, to make sure that that head doesn't slip out. Because if the head slips out now, three inches, three seconds, from being born, and he kills it, it's murder. But as long as he leaves that head in there, he's very careful to make sure that head stays there. It doesn't matter how he kills it. It's an abortion and it's legal in this country. And as I stood there in horror, I watched this. The doctor took a pair of scissors and into the back of the baby's neck, back here, he plunged those scissors. And when he did this, the baby jerked out in a startle reaction. And he took the scissors and he opened it up to make a hole in the back of the neck and he took a high-powered suction machine and a catheter and he stuck that into the hole and he literally suctioned out the baby's brains. And they went down the tube and into a jar. 
and I almost hit the floor. I mean, I stood there and I thought, this isn't happening. This really isn't happening. I'm dreaming this. Please wake me up. And I choked back the tears and the lump in my throat. And I couldn't believe it. I could not believe it. I didn't want to be in there, but it, but it happened. He pulled the head out and he cut the cord and he delivered the placenta and threw it in the pan. And he cleaned her up and he took the baby out of the room. And this mom wanted to see her baby. We tried to talk her out of it, but she does have the right to see it. So we cleaned her up and put a pad on her and walked her to the ultrasound machine room. And we cleaned the baby up and put it in a little blanket and we handed it to her. I don't know what she thought she was going to see, but I don't think it's what she saw because she looked down in his little face and she started screaming to God to forgive her. And she held him and she rocked him and she begged him to forgive her. And at that point, I couldn't take it. I had to leave. I ran to the bathroom and beside a toilet, I kneeled and I screamed to God. And I said, God, why are you letting this happen? Why? Why does this have to happen? This is murder. I mean, I can't believe you'd allow this to happen. There were seven of these done that day. Every one of the mothers were perfectly healthy. Nothing was wrong with them. They just waited later in their pregnancy to have an abortion. One baby had Down syndrome. The rest of them were perfectly healthy babies. In this country, how does stabbing the child in the back of the head protect the mother? That's just ridiculous. It doesn't make any sense. The public out there has no clue of what's going on behind these closed doors. They just hear abortion. Well, abortion's a woman's right. You know, she has a right to do what she wants to with her body. It wasn't her body they was doing it to. It was those little tiny babies that they were doing it to. And it was just incredible. I don't think I will ever get over seeing those babies move and flinch from the pain that was being inflicted in them. And then looking down into that little boy's face. If I've ever seen an angel, it was that day. Some have likened this chart to a depiction of an appendicitis operation. My God. Appendicitis. That's not an appendix. That's not a blob of tissue. It is a baby. It's a baby. You're allowed to kill the baby as long as the baby gets dead before he comes out into the air. But in this procedure, the baby is alive until the head is pierced. But sometimes, at that point, she gives a big uh, pop, out comes the head. Now you have a live child in your arms. What do they do? Well, they don't publicize this, of course, but they take the baby and put him in a bucket of water and drown him. Now we've gone from the partial birth abortion to something called the live birth abortion. Congress held hearings on this in the summer, and we learned that at certain Chicago area hospitals, doctors are inducing labor for the purpose of delivering a premature baby, which is then wrapped in a surgical towel and stuffed on a counter in a laundry room or some other unused room and left until the baby dies. I mean, this is barbaric. Abortions never stop. They get broader and broader. And now the most recent one that we found out about is what they call therapeutic abortions or live birth abortions. Some people think, well, this is just an emergency method where a mother has to have an abortion to save her life. Not true. These are elective abortions. And this is simply means that a doctor induces labor. The baby is born. Sometimes they die during labor, but many times they live through that labor. And here you've got a living baby, a live birth abortion, and they give it what they, they call comfort care, where the mother or the nurse, if there's a nurse available, will literally hold that baby wrapped up in a blanket in their arms until that baby breathes its last breath. It is not given any nourishment or any medical attention. Now, if there's no, no one available and the mother doesn't care to hold the baby, they'll sometimes put it back in a storage room on a shelf and the baby is left to die there. The live birth abortion has become the method of choice since the attending doctor doesn't even have to be there. Everything can be handled by the nurses and residents. The doctor doesn't have to get his hands dirty by sucking out the baby's brains. 
More importantly, this procedure leaves the baby's brain intact for later resale. 50 years ago, Nazi doctors, trials of Nuremberg, and these doctors justified the experiments that they did on humans, on Jews and others, that this was going to help mankind. They hanged those doctors at Nuremberg. them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone where the beast and the false prophet are and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever and the books were opened and another book was opened which is the book of life and the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works and the sea gave up the dead which were in it and death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them and they were judged every man according to their works. This is the second death. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire.